When screening your tenants, you may run across an applicant who notes that they have an assistance animal. Whether it's an emotional support animal or a service animal, they are both protected by law. The most important thing you need to know is that they are not pets. These are animals at work. They provide emotional and additional assistance to people with disabilities. Hi, I'm Brandon with Good Life Property Management and today we're going to talk about the difference between emotional support animals and service animals and what your rights are as a landlord in regards to them. As a reminder, please check with your attorney regarding all matters pertaining to assistance animals. Our advice is general in nature and should not be relied upon without checking with your attorney. Before we jump in, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content just like this. First, let's review what a service animal is. Service animals are animals that have been trained to assist a person, often with something physical. A service animal is always a dog. Common reasons for a service animal include blindness, deafness, assisting wheelchair-bound individuals, and being prone to seizures. You might recognize a service animal by the vest they are wearing, usually labeled service dog, or something similar to that. You are not allowed to ask a person what their disability is or ask that their animal demonstrate how it's a service animal. Service animals do not need to be certified or registered anywhere. Now that we've established what a service animal is, let's talk about emotional support animals. Emotional support animals, also called ESAs, are therapeutic animals and are there to provide support for those that suffer from things like post-traumatic stress, anxiety, depression, etc. They are most often a cat or a dog, but a wide variety of animals can be considered an ESA. You cannot ask a person why they have an emotional support animal. You can, however, request documentation, such as a letter from their mental health professional, to confirm that the need for the ESA is a result of a disability. Emotional support animals have more restrictions in public spaces. If a retail store states that there are no pets allowed, this applies to emotional support animals as well. There is not an official registry for ESAs. Some pet owners seek out private companies to provide documentation, but this does not guarantee them any additional rights or protections. Because emotional support animals and service animals are not considered pets, you cannot charge a pet rent or pet deposit. Even if you don't want pets in the home, you must allow for service animals and support animals to live inside the home. You also cannot discriminate against specific breeds. The only circumstances in which you may deny a support animal is if the animal would be a threat to the health and safety of others. We don't recommend using these reasons, however. Disability complaints are one of the most common complaints the Fair Housing Office receives, and it's very unlikely that things are going to work out in your favor. You could end up having to pay heavy fees for unreasonably denied service animals. As of January 1st, 2022, there is a new law in California that seeks to address the issue of people misrepresenting their emotional support animals as service animals. It also intends to stop businesses that provide ESA certificates, ID cards, vests, etc. from misleading people into thinking that the emotional support animals are the same as service animals. The first part of this law states that any business that provides dogs as emotional support animals will now be required to provide a statement acknowledging that the animal does not count as a service animal and that representing the dog as a service animal is illegal. The same statement must be provided by businesses that sell ESA for certificates, ID cards, and vests. The other part of the law states that an official ESA letter is required to prove to a landlord or other relevant parties that the animal is an emotional support animal. The letter must be from a licensed mental health professional and that person must meet a specific set of requirements. For the full list of requirements, check out our corresponding blog post below. And that wraps up today's video. We hope you're able to identify and clarify the differences between service animals and emotional support animals. As always, we recommend talking to your attorney regarding specific questions and situations. I'm Brandon. That's Olivia behind the camera, and we'll see you next time.